Hello, the piece you're about to watch is my presentation at the ICA Nigeria Second Quarterly Seminar Series. I shared on what I call Transform, Not Inform, the Art of Masterful Slides. I shared with the ICA community my thoughts based on the research of so many other persons, including David J.P. Phillips, on how to present slides that are engaging, interesting, and that won't torture your audience. That will be a celebration of the amazing weeks, months, and even years that you spent doing the research. I think the time to present is the time to shine, but it's not really about us. It's about how comfortable and how memorable our presentation is and how we get people from just knowing about our work to taking specific actions. I hope you find this interesting because it was a real pleasure doing it. My name is Dr. Sarah Tidiburijo. Enjoy. that we're able to remember what we've done and by rereading and sort of understanding more in-depthly what we've done, we're able to um, focus more on the things that are worth sharing and um, uh, thinking about the time and resources available in whatever platform we're doing so. And that calls for the next step preparation. We want to ask questions about time. We want to find out what the dress code is. We want to find out the kind of resources available because all of this is important in the context of pre preparing slides. The next one is to understand that slides are basically visual aids. We are the presentation. We are the presenters. But the work is not about us. We are there to actually share knowledge and do that using these visual aids um, that will help um, our conversations be memorable and be beautiful and captivating at the same time. And then the last thing I would like to say here is, um, and I thank God that uh, Professor Muta also talked about transformation. I'm also a believer um, in transformation. To get people from a point of where may having knowledge or just informing them about what you've done, what you've done over the years or months, um, to a point of getting them to take particular action. I think that's what slide presentation is all about. I think that's what conversation in the academic space is all about. And today, that's what I like to do, to get you from a point of just knowing about slides. Um, of course, I don't know all about this. I'm just sharing my experience so far. So I come from a place of humility as well. Um, to get you from a point of just knowing about it to a point where you get people to take particular action, where I get you to take particular action about the slides. And so just to make progress here, I would like to show you just a little beautiful roadmap. Some of the things, um, just five points that we have to remember when we want to design a slide. Some of the things to look out for. So get it from a place where we're just putting images out there, we're just putting text out there, to a point where we're actually using our slides to communicate powerful and precise information. Um, the first one will be one idea per slide. It's just so horrible sometimes to get people um, reading through our slide. It takes the attention from us, the presenter, to the visual aid. And I don't think that's what slides are about. It's for us to pre present information in ways that are powerful, that are precise, that are memorable, and to show that we do understand what we've done. So for instance, look at the slide. There's a tendency with this kind of slide to begin to read through line by line, line by line, and that takes away the focus from what you're saying. Except you're using your slides to get people to read. If it's to accompany your conversation or what you're explaining, this is quite terrible. But I want you to look at this one on the other side. This is quite clear. One idea per slide. This is about ecofeminism. Whether you're applying this as a theory or you're applying this as a principle or as a philosophy, people will get the point. The next thing I would like to talk about is the idea of contrast, how to use color or size to make contrast. As you can see with this slide, the background is white. The colors are a little bit blurry. For people who are sitting far away or looking at screens, this can be quite blinding and a little bit uncomfortable. And I know not everybody agrees, but when you look at this one, there's something about this slide that brings comfort to the eyes. And I think that even though when we look at the um, software available, sometimes they come with this default white background. It's important to change them to make our conversation and to make our audience more comfortable looking at the text. The next thing I would like to talk about is the issue of size. There's a tendency sometimes again for us to allocate size on the wrong elements. For instance, in the in academic community, everybody knows theoretical framework, what's about. I think in doing this, we want to draw 
the attention of our audience, our listeners, our faculties to the kind of theories we applied. So locating size in this way is quite distracting, in my opinion, and based on some of the research that others have done. But on the other hand, when we look at this, it's quite precise. We're drawing attention and focus to two different theories or principles in terms of what we've done, framing ecofeminism. And of course, this can be applied in different ways. Let's use size precisely, knowledgeably, in a way that would communicate exactly what we want our audience to know about. The next one is text versus visuals. It takes about 500 times more to understand text as opposed to images. So we encourage use of images more, the use of photographs, infographics, pictures, and so on and so forth. Looking at this slide, for instance, automatically the attention of the audience will go through reading line by line. And again, this can be quite distracting. But when we flip on the other side, this image is quite precise. What are we seeing here? Multidimensional poverty in Nigeria, north 65%, south 35%. This is quite clear in terms of demonstrating knowledge regarding results of a particular research. It is memorable. It is beautiful. The background is clear. The images are clear. I believe you can see it um, from where you're seated. This, in my view, is where we should be headed in terms of talking about our research. And then lastly, there's a lot of conversation around how many items should be on a particular slide um, so that it doesn't become too wordy or too crowded. Um, and so when you look at a slide, for instance, you see all of this, the colors, the number of items, it could be a bit distracting, but flip on the other side, boom. Not everyone will agree with the number six. I've heard some persons talk about five and some seven, but I think six is quite comfortable. I will have to use this, of course, with respect to what we're trying to share. As much as possible, make the information more precise, more concise, and use the visuals as a supporter, not a replacement. Okay, what have I tried to say here? Um, there are just about five things you need to remember. The first one is about one idea per slide, the use of contrast, the use of size, the focus on visuals, and lastly, the magic number for me is six. But again, I'm sure there are some persons who will be thinking, well, I don't know how to use these platforms. I don't even know where to do them. I don't know how to draw. I have good news. There are great presentation software that can help you do this. Um, and I'm here, I'll just share a few that I've tried before. Um, and I think these are some of the best in the market right now. And these are Google Slides, very powerful, free of charge, of course. You can explore PowerPoint, Prezi, Visme, Extensio, Keynote, Canva is so beautiful, Zoho Show. And for those of us who are exploring the world of AI, Tome is also a beautiful um, presentation and slides design platform that can help you just by keying in some information to help you generate your slides. You don't need to know all of them. To start off, if you're already pro at this, you can begin by exploring C PowerPoint and begin to know how to use it more effectively and then begin to explore. For this particular presentation, for instance, I think I used about three or four of them to put it together. And with time, we can all get there if you're not already there. Um, remember, the idea here is to start small, but use this beautiful opportunity afforded us by technology to help and capture the information and demonstrate knowledge of what we've done in a way that is beautiful, in a way that's powerful, in a way that's memorable. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who would like to see this slides again, you can go to my website, drsarahjo.com. It's available in the next um, 48 hours, I believe. And uh, everything you've listened here is powered by Ellen Hub Media. Thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Sarah.